in quantum mechanics which we have learnt and discussed in the previous lectures are actually known as non relativistic quantum mechanics or you may also call it schrodinger's quantum mechanics okay now uh, we are going to start a very important chapter and a very new uh, concept in quantum mechanics which is actually to discuss the relativistic quantum mechanics or you may also say that our aim is to develop relativistic wave equations okay so in this first lecture on this relativistic quantum mechanics i would like to only introduce you to this chapter in fact why we need relativistic quantum mechanics and what was the difficulties to develop the theory of relativistic quantum mechanics we will see in this brief introduction and after this uh, introductory lecture if from the next lecture we will discuss actual concept or actual relativistic wave equations uh, in the forthcoming lecture okay actually uh, you know that uh, one of the greatest uh, unresolved problems of uh, theoretical physics since uh, 1925 uh, is actually to develop a theory which is consistent with uh, a special theory of relativity as well as quantum mechanics okay in fact after the successful experimental tests of einstein's theory of relativity it was felt that any theory not consistent with relativity was not accepted easily because the theory of relativity after the experimental test of theory of relativity it, it was believed that all physical laws all theories must be consistent with a special theory of relativity so the people also start to think that this quantum mechanics should, should be also consistent with the special theory of relativity okay so in the first two decades of 20th century the theory of relativity and quantum mechanics were developed independently as two wonderful and attractive theories in physics okay you know and uh, after the advent of these two theories continuous efforts have been made to reconcile these two theories with each other okay as you know according to a special theory of relativity all the coordinate frames of reference which can be obtained from a given frame by those transformations which leave the interval between two points in the four dimensional flat space invariant are equivalent for the description of a physical system okay in other words you can also say that uh, uh, that any physical law which is invariant under a particular transformation which is called lorentz transformation that physical law is actually a valid physical law a true law okay so definitely any valid physical law or any valid physical equation must be invariant under lorentz transformation actually uh, that this is known as lorentz covariance okay and every physical law or every physical equation must follow must conform this uh, lorentz covariance okay in fact uh, in classical mechanics this invariance is actually accompanied by requiring that the equation of motion have the same form 
in all equivalent frames of reference okay the requirements of relativistic invariance in quantum mechanics when you talk about that is somewhat different from that of the classical mechanics or you may also say that uh, the requirement of relativistic invariance in quantum mechanics are more complex than those in uh, classical mechanics because when you talk about the relativistic invariance in quantum mechanics uh, in that case mathematically uh, this is described by a square integrable function of the coordinates uh, from which you can derive only the probability of uh, a result of a particular observation because you know in uh, quantum mechanics whenever you uh, observe any phenomenon any event you can only uh, state the probable value of that uh, particular quantity or that particular event only probable value and that probability is measured in terms of a wave function you know that the uh, a square of the modulus of a wave function is just a measure of the probability density so in fact experimentalists in different systems can only be required to observe the same probability of the result of an experiment then uh, he may say that the uh, event or uh, or the physical law is same in both frames when the probability uh, measured from two different coordinate system will be same okay actually this reduces to a problem of uh, translating the description of a physical system in terms of its wave function in one frame of reference to that in another frame such as to preserve the probabilities okay so in a nutshell you can say that uh, if your aim is to make the quantum mechanical theory consistent with a special theory of relativity or you can say that if your aim is to deal with the motion of a particle in quantum mechanics whose speed is very high whose whose motion is relativistic then actually the original uh, schrodinger's wave equation uh, is not sufficient or you may say that it is not adequate to deal with uh, such a problem of micro particle moving with the very high speed okay in fact in that condition we need a quantum mechanical theory uh, which will actually applicable even when the particle is in relativistic motion but uh, for this that uh, form of the equation of motion must Uh, follow the lorentz uh, covariance because any valid law or any valid physical law or equation must be lorentz covariance as you know this is just an essential feature of the special theory of relativity so i have mentioned it here you can see if the form of physical equation or law remains unchanged under lorentz transformation then that equation or law is said to be invariant or covariant under lorentz transformation and this is an essential requirement that true physical laws must conform this covariance covariance okay but uh, now uh, we will see that actually the basic dynamical equations which we have actually studied till now Uh, are actually two basic laws in quantum mechanics you have studied schrodinger equation okay this is also called wave mechanics and in classical physics in field theory we have studied the maxwell field equations actually maxwell's field equations are uh, classical equations okay and uh, you will see that maxwell's field equations are actually invariant or covariant under the 
Lorentz transformation, but uh, Schrodinger equation is not covariant under Lorentz transformation. We will see uh, how we can say that uh, uh, this uh, Schrodinger equation is not invariant under Lorentz transformation. Uh, you may underst uh, understood it. You can see. As I have told you that uh, till now we have studied two types of theory. In classical theory, we have studied Maxwell's field equations, and in quantum mechanics, we have studied Schrodinger wave equation for the material particle. Okay, you know that uh, there are four Schrodinger equations. The first one is del dot e, that means uh, divergence e equal to rho by epsilon, and the second one is divergence b equal to zero. And third one is curl of E equal to minus del B by del T, and fourth one is del cross B equal to mu J plus mu epsilon del E by del T. I hope you know uh, the meaning of each and every term here. E and B actually represent the electric and magnetic field, and this rho is the volume charge density. Epsilon is permittivity of the medium, and mu. Is the permeability of the medium okay? Now you can see that these first two equations are actually the time independent equation, and the third and fourth equation is actually time dependent equation. You can see here that in third and fourth equation, uh, the space derivative and the time derivatives are present, okay? When you say del cross e, you know this del operator means what? You can see here del means del del x i plus del del y j plus del del z k. You can see it here, okay? And this is just a first order is uh, operator in a space, okay? And as in RHS, you can see the operator uh, related to time that is del del t is present. And you can see that uh, these two operators are of first order. And so, if uh, the space operator and the time operator both are of first order, then you can say that these Maxwell's equations will be covariant under Lorentz transformation. Or you can, in other words, you can say that these uh, Maxwell's equations will conform the Lorentz transformation, okay? Why? Because according to uh, the four dimensional, uh, according to a special theory of relativity, in our four dimensional space, actually a space and a time coordinates are placed on the same footing. They are not independent from one another. So if in any equation, the space derivative and the time derivative are of same order, then definitely that equation will be in accordance with the spatial relativity, that is, they will be uh, invariant under the Lorentz transformation. And that's why you can say, since in Maxwell's equations, both the space derivative and time derivative both are of same uh, order, that is, first order, and th that's why we can easily say that these Maxwell's equations are covariant or invariant under the Lorentz transformation. And uh, we have actually discussed this invariance of Maxwell's equation in very detail uh, in relativistic electrodynamics. You can see the playlist of my channel, uh, Relativistic Electrodynamics, where you will find 12 videos. And, in, uh, and one of the videos is related to this invariance or covariance of Maxwell's field equations under Lorentz transformation. So if you want to go through uh, this fact in detail, you may watch my video in the playlist of relativistic electrodynamics. In fact, I have mentioned it here. You can see that these Maxwell's equations are Lorentz covariant because both the space derivative, that is, this del is a space derivative, this is first order derivative, space derivative, and time derivative, del del t, occur in the first order, you can see. 
and that's why you say that Maxwell's field equations are invariant under the Lorentz transformation. Now you know that the basic dynamical equation for dealing with the properties of microparticles in non-relativistic mechanics is Schrodinger equation. Okay, and the time-dependent Schrodinger equation is written like this. This is h psi equal to e psi. This is actually the general form of Schrodinger equation. And if your aim is to write down the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, then this e is replaced by the operator i h bar del del t. And if you substitute for this non-relativistic Hamiltonian, h here is non-relativistic Hamiltonian, and this non-relativistic Hamiltonian is defined by minus h bar square over 2m del square plus v of r psi equal to i h bar del psi by del t. You can say that this is Schrodinger's non-relativistic time-dependent equation. Why it is called non-relativistic equation? Because the form of the Hamiltonian in this equation is non-relativistic. You, uh, you can see my video on relativistic Hamiltonian in the playlist of classical mechanics. You will find it. Uh, but this form of Hamiltonian is non-relativistic form. So we say that this is non-relativistic uh, time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Now see this equation seriously. You can see in this equation in RHS, the time derivative is of first order. This is just del del t. Okay? But in LHS, you can see in the expression of this non-relativistic Hamiltonian, the operator del square is present. And this del square, which is called Laplacian, is equal to del 2 by del x square plus del 2 by del y square and plus del 2 by del z square. You know it. Okay. Del 2 by del z square. Okay. So you can see that this is uh, the space derivative of second order. When it will be operated on psi, then there, here, there will be psi, psi, and psi. So this is just the space derivative of second order. So in this equation, the in this equation in RHS, the time derivative of first order is present, and in LHS, the space derivative of second order is present. But according to a special theory of relativity, in four-dimensional space, you cannot place the space and time at different footing. They must be uh, placed at the same footing uh, and you can't differentiate between them. And so, if in any equation the space and time derivatives are of different orders, Definitely that equation is not consistent with the special theory of relativity. In other words, you can say that such equation cannot be covariant or invariant under Lorentz transformation. And as I have told you earlier, that if a theory or if an equation or if a physical law is inconsistent with the Lorentz transformation, that is, if any equation is not invariant or covariant under Lorentz transformation, then that a theory is not complete. That is not actually a true valid physical law or physical theory. Okay. So uh, I have just mentioned it here. I am just giving the reading again. You can see it is obvious that in the Schrodinger equation, the time derivative occurs in the first order, whereas the space derivatives as they come from the non-relativistic form of Hamiltonian of the particles are of the second order. Okay? And so this violates the basic principle of a spatial relativity according to which space and time must stand on equal
equal footing in any covariant formulation okay and thus you can say that schrodinger equation with non relativistic hamiltonian is limited is limited in its applicability to systems with velocities v much smaller than c it means this form of schrodinger equation can be used only to deal with the, with the particles whose velocity is much smaller than c it means say if the motion of the particle is non relativistic then this schrodinger equation can be used to describe a such a, a particle but if the velocity of the particle is high that is if it tends to c then this form of schrodinger equation which is not consistent with a special theory of relativity or which is not actually lorentz covariant that can not be used to deal with the problem of micro particle when the velocity of the micro particle is very high which tends to c okay this is a basic problem with the uh, schrodinger equation which we have uh, studied till now okay actually there is uh, an another problem too very important problem actually you know that in making a transition from one from non relativistic to relativistic quantum mechanics you must ret uh, retain the principles underlying the non relativistic theory okay in fact it is non trivial problem to generalize quantum mechanics to describe relativistic particles and uh, any such attempt reveals some other unusual features okay first of all the properties of a spin when you say spin that is just an angular momentum okay this property of a spin which is just an at an angular momentum are closely related to the requirement of a special relativity and as a consequence the form of the wave function for a particle depends critically on a spin okay but you know the schrodinger equation which is a dynamical equation and plays a vital and fundamental role in quantum mechanics it may be considered as a dynamical law for the microphysics it does not incorporate a spin of the concerned particle you know it the schrodinger equation does not deal with the property like a spin okay and as i have told you that for the any theory this property of a spin is an essential feature of a special theory of relativity but in schrodinger equation there is no idea of a spin so definitely you can say that the schrodinger's non relativistic equation is not consistent with the requirement of a special theory of relativity okay in other words we can say that uh, this schrodinger equation which does not incorporate the spin of the concerned particle cannot conform with the principle of relativity okay so this is another problem so i have actually uh, explained why the, the schrodinger equation is not consistent with a special theory of relativity and it uh, cannot be used for uh, the particle which is moving with relativistic velocity that is a velocity which is almost equal to a speed of light such, such particle cannot be described by schrodinger equation i have actually explained it by uh, two uh, on the basis of two ideas first of all you have seen that in the basic schrodinger equation the space derivative is of second order and the time derivative is of first order and so in, in this on this basis we can say that such an equation will be not will be not lorentz invariant or not invariant or covariant under lorentz transformation 
and if it is not invariant under lorentz transformation then uh, the motion of the particle moving with high speed cannot be described by it okay the another problem is uh, is explained in terms of a spin in fact the spin of particle is an essential feature of special relativity but in schrodinger equation there is no idea of a spin when you write schrodinger equation and you use the wave function psi psi gives all informations about the particle except a spin a spin is not included in the wave function used by uh, used in schrodinger's equation but if uh, you want to incorporate the so uh, the spin is idea of a spin or property of a spin of the concerned particle in the wave equation definitely you need a wave equation in which such a wave function will be used which gives the uh, which actually contains the idea of a spin too but that equation is not schrodinger equation okay so this is another problem uh, with the schrodinger equation okay now how this problem was actually solved in fact uh, to solve this problem the first attempt was made by schrodinger himself schrodinger himself made the first attempt to solve this problem okay and uh, regarding this he uh, proposed uh, the first equation uh, <coughs> but himself he discarded this equation because when he proposed an equation to solve this problem uh, he found that the equation proposed by him fails completely to yield a correct spectrum of hydrogen atom and so schrodinger who devised an equation to solve this problem himself discarded his equation okay and in fact after that an equation was proposed and discussed independently by clean fock and gordon which is actually known as clean gordon equation okay so we will uh, deal with this problem by clean gordon equation in this chapter in very detail you will see that this clean gordon equation is applicable for a spinless particle and the another wave equation of this relativistic uh, uh, quantum mechanics is the very famous equation which is called actually dirac equation in fact from this dirac equation you will see the idea of a spin is included in it so dirac equation is applicable for uh, the particle having a spin but clean gordon equation is applicable only for a spinless particle and by using these two wave equations uh, you can deal with the physics of particle micro particles moving with high speed or the particles in relativistic motion but uh, in spite of this there is some difficulties in this uh, wave equation uh, too okay in fact uh, various attempts were made to obtain a, a relativistic equation but after getting these two equations uh, the total problem was not reconciled in fact uh, it is found that uh, the micro world can be achieved only within the framework of quantum field theory or you can say this can be achieved or overcome by expanding the theory in terms of second quantization okay so this was just a brief account or brief introduction regarding the relativistic quantum mechanics and uh, now after this brief uh, uh, discussion we will start our ch uh, actual chapter or actual concept from the next lecture but i hope you have uh, definitely understand why this relativistic quantum mechanics was needed uh, and uh, uh, how, <coughs> how it is developed and uh, 
what are the basic ideas uh, of this relativistic quantum mechanics this will be dealt in several lectures uh, on this subject and definitely i hope you should watch the all the videos when you will watch all the videos in sequence definitely your concept regarding this relativistic quantum mechanics will be clear and as i hope